Good evening folks and welcome to another TEW 2020 video. You join us for some more AW action with Dynamite. We are one show away from 100, which is mental, well, 100 episodes. So I'm hoping to do a spectacular episode of Lightning. It's a shame it is only a TV show and not a pay-per-view. But hopefully we give you um, a really, really good main event. That's the aim. I've had it planned for a wee while with storyline implications. If we could get 100 out of it, I'd be delighted, but I, I, I doubt we will. There's one thing that I'm putting against myself, which um, you'll find out at the end of the episode. It was a good show, we're on the road to AW Respect, so let's carry on, shall we? Let's do it. So we're at Albany, Georgia, 14,296 fans in attendance. We have our pre-show matches, which of course have been after AW Heels, which we'll, we'll cover in the main screen once we get the results up. Abaddon over Gazelle Shaw in 6.30 was a 44, so Abaddon's getting close to 50 rated performances, that's good. We had Will Hobbs defeat TK Cooper in 5.50 by pinfall, that was a 40. Next up we had Thunder Rosa defeat Charlie Evans in 9.09, this was a 39, so she's slowly getting over, as I say we'll, we'll be quite slowly Thunder Rosa but she will get a big push eventually. We had Odin Odeo Tai defeat Fire and Flavor in 905 when Jamie Hater pinned Kira Hogan. A 41 here. Good stuff from the heels. They're slowly but surely having good performances. A bit to go for Hogan and Steels. And we had Brandon Cutler defeat John Silver in 736 with Wipeout. Two wins now for Brandon Cutler in this series. Both of them over John Silver. But a 32. Both guys with great chemistry. And we had a poor pre-show matchup that saw British Strong Style, or Moustache Mountain, defeat the Dark Order in 10.27, when Tyler Bate pinned Evelino with a Tyler Driver, 97. A 63 here, uh, I think he made this steal the show? Nope, just regular. Quite happy with that. I believe that's the main event of the Dark Show, and it is. So we start the show, the actual episode of Dynamite, with this 88 rated segment, so that's a wee bit worrying and puts a bit of pressure on the main event. But we have the TNT champion Prince Devitt in the ring. And he just talks about how it's been good since he arrived to AEW, he's proud to represent the network as TNT champion, and it's good to see a lot of friends from afar, you know, that have maybe been from New Japan back in the day or some in that other company, or even some back in the UK and Ireland. Here comes Kenny Omega, and he just says to him, well he accepts that they were different eras of the Bullet Club, he appreciates that it was David that started it, and that Kenny was happy to continue that on, and then into the Elite. Both of them still have good relations with the Bucks, hence the Bucks are still in the Elite, but also still in the Bullet Club with David. This leads to Cody Rhodes coming out and he says, oh, this love affair with the Young Bucks. Matt and Nick basically piggied off my name. And to an extent, Kenny, so did you. The Elite was cool. Bullet Club was cool. But now it's all about the New Age Horsemen. It's about Cody Rhodes. It's about Ace Austin, AJ Styles. And it's about the fourth man who I've somehow forgotten. AJ Styles, Ace Austin, and Pete Dunn. I'm sorry, Pete Dunn. But yeah, he's just basically saying, you know, how that's far greater than, and will be far greater than the Elite or Bullet Club ever were. And he says, tonight, TK has made the match, eight man tag main event. It is going to be Cody Rhodes, Ace Austin, AJ Styles, and Pete Dunn against Prince Devitt, Kenny Omega and the Young Bucks. Now he's going to work on a deal, Cody, with TK Tony Khan to give Kenny a massive matchup for the show they're dubbing on Lightning is 100. So 88. More on that later. Straight in we had some action and it was a pretty good chemistry between Nakamura and the Butcher and about they had good, uh, sorry, not much heat and terrible wrestling. Shinsuke defeats the Butcher in 756 with a running Single leg knee strike. 
63, I'm happy with that one. Sorry, Butcher, I think you're awesome, but I need people to put people over. I don't want to get Nakamura right up there, straight off the bat. So good victory there for Nakamura. Of course, the Fallen Man is the Butcher, the Blade's there. Sean Spears is there, but Nakamura has a bit of a stare down with the leader of the Hangman Posse, Hangman Adam Page. So a bit of tension between these two, of course, Hangman not too long off that defeat to Samoa Joe and could Nakamura see that as a potential weakness of Hangman. 80 for that. With a terrible matchup, they had Eddie Kingston defeat Joey Janela in 8.42. A 54 here. Um, Joey was kind of like the highest guy I was willing to put over. Yeah, it's probably put Eddie Kingston over, everyone else is like in mids push. Joey Janela has remained over despite barely winning for me. It's a bit of a shame because I don't mind him, but he's just like, his overness has been just very good fodder for everyone else. So he takes the, the defeat here, and then after the match, we go backstage, Eddie Kingston walks by, and Lance Archer just destroys Peter Avalon. So a 45, Peter Avalon completely obliterated. He is away from Kingston's paradise, but is Lance Archer maybe taking up Eddie Kingston on that offer? It remains to be seen that 45 rated segment. Then the short matchup that saw Tommy End knock out Griff Garrison in 329, a 60. Simple matchup, make him look like a complete badass, and Griff Garrison to be KO'd. But at least Griff's getting over just by these appearances, decent matchups, and he's just been a an enhancement talent, so he's, he's filling in that role perfectly just now. We had Sir Brody Lee come down to do some colour commentary on the next matchup, that was a 69, as we have Anna J in action, and her matchup was abysmal, as she defeated Mayu Iwatani in 649 with an illegal object getting used. But I just felt like Anna was at that stage where I was going to do the John Silva, Anna, Anna thing, but no, she's at a good position where she's now reasonably over, Iwatani's more over, and Iwatani's obviously far more experienced, so better in the ring. So I felt like it was a good person to put her up against, and hopefully she can benefit from that win. A 49 there for the Queen Slayer. Because he obviously was at ringside, Sir Brody Lee then cuts a promo on Darby Allen. This was a 79. It Brody looked good, but he also has a gimmick that's getting stale. He just basically says he's still pissed off at that defeat, a revolution to Darby Allen. He is not gonna let that you know, let that go. He wants respect, he demands respect from Darby Allen, and it's quite apt that the next AW event is AW Respect. So if Darby Allen's got the balls, then he'll face the leader of the Dark Order one more time. So will we see that rematch? Spoiler, probably. But uh, yeah, Darby Allen will seek to respond to that on a future episode. Next up, I had a promo with Tony Storm. I wasn't sure if Mercedes was going to be free, but she is actually available. But I just felt like we'll have Tony hype up the matchup between Mercedes Vernado, Tony Storm, and of course Chris Statlander in that triple threat match, which I'm going to hold off and have at AW Respect. So a big one there, a 67. I might even add a fourth entrant if I can weasel them in. But it's going to be four of our top female athletes in AEW. So happy with that one. We then had Will Osprey in action. He defeated Kip Sabian, his compatriot, in 940 with a Stormbreaker. A 78 there. Osprey with a 92. A 49 there for Kip Sabian. So it just shows if we can get Will over and get him winning, he's probably a main event player for us. So yeah, good win there for Will Osprey. We then had a, an angle where Luchasaurus and Marco Stunt are standing and then making his way back from injury as Jungle Boy. So the Jurassic Express fully back as Jungle Boy is back from injury and the segment get a 51. Jungle Boy looking good and Marco Stunt underperforming as we're going to see some tag team action up next I believe. And it was the team of Jungle Boy and Luchasaurus Jurassic Express who defeated MGF and Wardlow in 12.07. When Jungle Boy pinned Wardlow via a roll up. So a 75 here, and I think you can tell the odd one out there is MGF with a 95, but thankfully Wardlow was happy to do the job there 
as we're looking now to have Luchasaurus and Jungle Boy doing things going forward. After a matchup, beaten down was Luchasaurus, and now the four on one begins. As out from the back comes Mark Quinn and Ricky Starks, meaning it's the four members of Uprising. Marco Stunt's been swatted to the side, so it's 4v1, and making the save to save Jungle Boy, Chris Jericho, obviously who had that win and a feud with MJF. So hopefully a wee alliance here between the Jurassic Express and Chris Jericho, as he saves Jungle Boy from a serious beating, which was a 72 angle. So you see now we're starting to use this star power and get it over to other people. Cody then comes out. He says, well, obviously we're going to do battle in this eight-man tag. I have had word from TK, Tony Khan, what our match is going to be tomorrow night on AEW Lightning, the 100 show. The networks want it called the 100, we'll call it the 100. And that's the storyline, because obviously it's my 100th video, but not my 100th show, so that's how I'm working around it. So basically, we will have a matchup where Kenny Omega will be in the main event. The main event will be for the AEW Tag Team Championships. And it will be a fatal four-way. The four teams will be the Lucha Brothers, the Young Bucks, the AEW Tag Team Champions, Santana and Ortiz, and Kenny Omega and his friend, Michael Naka. Zawa. The stipulation is that Kenny doesn't need to win the match, but if he or Nakazawa is pinned, then Kenny Omega will no longer become the AW World Champion number one contender. So big pressure on Kenny. I did want to go with Kenny and somebody good, but I felt like if we go with Nakazawa, it's storyline related, that makes sense, and it would be mad if we could get like a 90 plus rated matchup with Michael Nakazawa in it. So I'm looking forward to that. It's going to be our main event for the next show. And of course our main event tonight is an 8-man tag and it was a 83. So I think we may just have an 84 rated show. But it was a superb matchup as the team of Kenny Omega, Prince David and the Young Bucks defeated the New Age Horsemen, Cody Rhodes, Pete Don Ace Austin and AJ Styles in 21.56 when Kenny pinned Ace Austin with the one winged angel. Weak link was AJ Styles with a 60, that physical decline has hit him. But I felt like this was going to be good to get a bit of overness and exposure to Dunn and Austin and AJ because he needs it as well. A few of their off their game are stale. Uh, let's have a quick look then to see what the negatives were. AJ stamina surely. No, just declining physical ability. A few low morales in there as well, but overall it's decent. I think, as I say, they're limited over this at the moment. If we had maybe another like six months recorded, that could maybe push to maybe an 87. But where the show we increase our popularity in 14 regions, so we wherever we show this, not in the US and Canada. But yeah, it serves its purpose, continues probably five or six storylines, and helps us build towards our event coming up in two weeks time. So we'll jump back, because we're using the, the very old now, killing the business mod, because obviously this was the first one that was playable at the time, because it was a light mod. Everyone else obviously far more in depth, so they took a bit of time, but yeah, 100 episodes, it's coming up next, which is quite mad. So AW Heels, we had Tenille Dashwood defeat Leva Bates, we had Layla Hirsch defeat Gazelle Shaw, we then had uh, Layla Hirsch and... Shayna Baszler attack is El Shaw with a promo from Saraya and Lana Austin as Saraya defeated Penelope Ford and we had our main event of Mercedes Vernado and Dr. Britt Baker, DMD, defeat Evie and Heidi Lovelace and then cut a promo. So 53 did exposure, although the, to be fair the rating was like a 0.20 last week so it's good they're getting an opportunity to get more TV time, but the eyes aren't there, which is a shame. Uh, PWG signed Scorpio Sky, it's a handshake deal, so we aren't going to lose a light, uh, live champion. Killer Cross is back 100%, which is good, and let's have a look. So Scorpio Sky is just telling us about that. Ken is back, that's good, that was back from his suspension. Don't have anything planned for him, so uh, 
we'll see where we can get him back in. He's been out for July. Well, there you go. We debuted them at double or nothing in May. They obviously, defeated the Butcher of the Blade, Sean Spears, lost the Hangman, defeated Matt Hardy, and then that's when he get busted for drugs. So, uh, yeah, we try again. With, Han with Kenta at the age of 40. He's still got a lot of good stats there. Our psychology's good, so I think we can do good things with Kenta. Going forward, uh, 2.64 for Dynamite, which is good. I think that's a lot higher than it's been recently. And Siri is going to be a star. Can't be honest, Jerry. She probably already is. She's just missing a lot more of them. Well, to be fair, she is actually, because I'm assuming she had won something before she went to NXT. But uh, yeah, you know what I mean. Like, she should definitely be like a Hall of Famer regardless. Even already, I'd say. So we obviously need to make her an AW Hall of Famer. So the Mercedes Serena match that happens down the line is going to be lit, for sure. But that's it. Thank you very much for tuning in. Hope you enjoyed it. As I say, saves a blow. Just cracked my headset there. Cause saves been a blast. Really enjoying it. Uh, so much that I've booked so much in advance. Just purely because I keep battering out episodes because it's just so much fun. Just shows you, maybe you just need to go try something different, go a different company and you get a new lease of life. Because obviously, how many times have I done a WWE save? Far too many, but as I say, hope you enjoyed it. Uh, that 8-man tag, um, sorry, that Fatal 4-way tag team match is going to be amazing. Hopefully we can do something good with Nakazawa in it. Uh, I don't mind him. He's a comedy character, but it plays into the storyline that the pressure is on Kenny Omega. So, cheers for watching. Good day, good night, bye-bye. See you for episode 100 in a few days' time. Bye-bye.